Last year, I watched a TV news expose about my city, about Jaffa. And this is what I saw. Violence, new luxury hotels, recently developed chic properties, and fashionable local Middle Eastern restaurants. The expose featured to inter interviews with all the successful, influential people of my city, of Jaffa, and ended with a photo shoot of all the people smiling together. As I watched it, I realized they had two things in common. One, they were all proud Jaffa resident. Two, they were all men. And all I could think about is, where are all the successful, influential Jaffa proud women? In the 21st century, it appears as if they couldn't find even one successful woman of my city. What kind of society I'm living in? I know that we are traditional conservative society, but I know that we have plenty of successful women. What do you think about a woman who fight the restrictions against women in leadership position who open the doors for other women to improve the society is worthy to be in this interview. This is Bakiza, as you see, a religious Muslim woman. Bakiza grew up without a father. Now she's married and the mom of six with two university degrees. And Bakiza is the first woman member of the city council for Muslim affairs. And since Bakiza broke the barrier preventing women of being on the city council, every election we have women. <laughs> and since violence on my city is a problem worth mentioning it in this TV expose, let me tell you what Nermin is doing. This is Nermin. Nermin, as a little girl, was exposed to a violent incident, shooting in the neighborhood. She was shocked and carried a trauma for years. But when she grew up, she decided to be a psychologist and open a clinic in Jaffa to treat children and teenagers who are affected in violence and are violent by themselves. By collaborating with parents, Nermin is preventing from our children from living in a violent reality. <clears throat> At that moment, it dawned on me that in my traditional conservative Arab community of Jaffa, overt expression of feminist power had escaped us. And every woman who became successful had done it in the shadow. They remain invisible to society, absent from our cultural narrative and unseen to all. Now, how does this invisibility affect us, affect our community? Firstly, it appears as if there are no successful women in Jaffa. And secondly, the positive effect of these hidden women is limited. But the most importantly, it means that there are no powerful women role models for future generations. My name is Zayat Abu Shmiz. And as a young girl, I grew up without many impressive women role models. All my role models, that mean in my family, the women of my family and my close community who married very young and for most part stayed home. Like them, I got engaged at 15, married at 17, 
and become a mom at a young age. So for girls like me, after this TV expose with the men, I decided to create a project called Successful Arab Jaffa Women, where I would publish the stories of the women in our own community. Because I know that every girl and woman need to have inspiring role models. So I start to search for local, local heroines. And I found them, of course. Initially, these women were reluctant to be interviewed. Some of them just believed that they weren't important enough, and others afraid that this exposure would maybe go against the convention of modesty, and they were all concerned about the negative reaction of the publicity. But when I convinced them that by putting themselves in the spotlight, they could help the girls in our own community, they agree. This is Jamile. Jamile is a brave woman who struggled to get divorced and fights against the social stigma about divorced women. This inspired her to create a project called Muntalika that works in, in two levels. First, it breaks the taboo against divorced women in our, in our Arab society. And second, it helped them these divorced women with a difficult divorce process so that it will not suffer as she did. This is Khulud. Khulud is a social activist who dedicates her life to working with underprivileged section society. Three years ago, she started to run a project that takes the young people of Jaffa and help them to develop and build projects to help our community. And also, two years ago, she won as a Woman of the Year. <laughs> this is Rukaya. Rukaya is my friend. Rukaya is the first Arab woman powerlifting world champion. But this was no easy fit, because not only did she have to overcome her paralysis, she also had to fight against the conventions of our community that is not encouraging women becoming leading athletes. After the first publish of this story, the feedbacks were totally positive from both men and women. Even men were bringing me stories of impressive women in their life. This project was no longer my project. It had become a community project with more than 40,000 followers, men and women. <laughs> men and women, Arab and Jews, and in, from the country and outside it. This showed me that my society is ready for a new cultural narrative that includes influential women. But change is not inevitable. It comes about our results of our actions. And I felt that was more to be done. From my volunteer work with at-risk teenage girls, I, I had seen their desperate need for positive role model women, for women who can open their eyes to a world of opportunities that they never knew existed. So I took these influential women to meet these girls, and the girls were captivated by their stories. The first woman that they meet is Noor. Noor, as a teenager, loses two of her brothers in an accident. As a result of this tragedy, her caring home falls apart, and she had 
to take care of herself. At that moment, Noor had made a very brave decision, unusual, to become the first Arab person from Jaffa to volunteer for the ambulance service. Not only she had she received an award for her service, she, this 16-year-old girl, she had inspired more than 100 persons in Jaffa, men and women, to volunteer the ambulance for the ambulance service. As Noor spoke, I saw the, the, the girl's eyes light up. They were hypnotized. They saw themselves in her. They could relate it to her. As a girl, Noor had been like them, and as a woman, they could be like her. The power of this local heroine is that it came from the similar background. They have the same problem to contend with and they managed to succeed and give to our society, to our Jaffa. I could use the well-worn story legendary heroines like uh, Amelia Earhart or Malala Yousafzai, and they are truly inspirational, but they are other women in other countries, other cultures, at other times, and we cannot imagine ourselves in their life we cannot walk into their giant's shoes. To be a role model, you don't have to cross the Atlantic Ocean. You just have to be visible so that others can learn from you, so that others can step in your shoes. Before that, I say my last word, Remember that at the beginning, I told you about the TV expose that presented only men. Now I would like to present the successful, influential women of Jaffa. They are there. <laughs> These women are only like 10% of the successful, influential women of Jaffa. But I want to tell you something. I just need you to find, to find these women in your communities and just let them be visible. Let them be. That's it.